Hello and welcome back to another Star Citizen video and welcome to Invictus Launch Week 2954. And a little bit of big, I mean, I would say I need to put a note here right now, okay? <laughs> Unfortunately, if you realize I have not been putting out Star Citizen content as in in the game version, or rather recording in the game, one of the biggest reason, in fact, actually the only reason right now is my machine cannot run Star Citizen anymore. It is sad. I need to upgrade. <laughs> I really, really need to upgrade. And it is tough. It is tough. That's what happened when I spent too much on internet spaceship. But then again, no, a new PC costs more than what I spend for internet spaceship in the long run. But still, I love it. I love Internet Spaceship, and at the same time, Star Citizen gives me the um, the fun bit of flying a spaceship that has an interior. Not many games offer that option, and that's why Star Citizen really, really stands out from the crowd because of that. And on top of that, they are technically crowdfunded, and that's why if you see later. Some of the ship prices are a little bit crazy in my opinion. It is to help to fund the development for Star Citizen and Squadron 42. It is optional. The only thing you need to spend if you want to enjoy Star Citizen is a discounted starter pack. That's right, a discounted starter pack. In this case, I would easily recommend if you are tight for money, if you want to play Star Citizen, Every ship is earnable in the game, so don't be, uh, don't panic, right? Don't panic. If you see some of the price later, it's mainly just me for people. Um, no, it's for me to inform people out there. If you want to buy, if you really, really want to support the development of uh, Star Citizen, here are some good ships that you could part your money with. But then again, all ships are earnable in game, so all you need to do is just buy the cheapest one, which is $40.50. In this case, we have the Aurora MR, the staple for discounted starter pack. And at the same time, you get the best of the best starter ship out there, the Avenger Titan. Now, both of these ship comes with 10 year warranty. And a lot of people will ask, is warranty a big deal? All right, I'm gonna put it out there. There are time limited warranty, usually in years usually and of course there is a exclusive perk that i usually will hunt when it comes to ship buying and that is lifetime insurance i will not nearly really just simply buy any ships if there's no lifetime insurance one of the biggest reasons out there it's a limitation for me not to splurge <laughs> yeah if i don't i mean yeah no it's, it's it's mainly for me that's all right that's all but for you guys out there, lifetime insurance right now, we don't have a, what do you call this? A lockdown definition of it. Because previously they want to do something like EVE Online. If your ships get destroyed, if you are in, um, if you did not insure your ship, it's lost forever. But what if you spend with real money, right? So the team just backtrack a little bit, which is in my opinion, I think it's a good thing. If you spend any real money on ships, you should be able to keep it. The only difference is you might need to wait longer. Right now, it's you have to wait longer compared to insured ship. And that's the difference. That's all. So that's the biggest PSA for you guys. Just get starter pack if you want to play Star Citizen. And now let's move on to the event. Let's start off with the big boy. No, no, let's skip the big boy for the smaller brands out there. First, all right, we're gonna start off with the Origin Jump Work and Origin Jump Work has three vehicles, 125A, 325A, and G12A. Now, before we go a little bit deeper, all right, let's, let's put it nicer. If you see an in concept up here, which means the ship is not ready or vehicle, so you don't get to play with it, unfortunately, but you get to see it on the floor if you're lucky, if they, have a model, but more importantly is if you see flight ready, fly free, and fly today for free, there you go. You get to enjoy it. <laughs> That's the fun bit. And of course you see the price tag. It is 
right now it is okay-ish, 60, 70, 65. Like, oh, that's all right. <laughs> Wait till you see later. Next up, we're going to go to Consolidated Outland. Consolidated Outland has only one vehicle, which is the Mustang Delta at $65. Yeah, nothing much. The consolidated outland. Okay, the Mustang. Technically, the Mustang series is actually not bad. I mean, it's not as bad as what people think. Unfortunately, it has a bad reputation due to the development cycle. Right? Previously, it does not have a cargo. No, not say previously it does not have. Pre this is the last starter ship in the game that received a proper cargo fix. Yes, the Aurora Emma got the cargo fix first, in my opinion. And that is also actually not really a fix. People manage to just chuck a box in. <laughs> Whereas the Mustang Delta really needs a, a, a cargo, um, the, the cargo function to really, really work. And yeah, previously it didn't work. I think for a f one or two good, full good year, and people got upset when, when they bought the Mustang. Yeah, but now it's fixed. So the Mustang has back back on the menu <laughs> in my opinion next up we have the argo astronautics now let's start off with the new ship the new kit on the block for the argo series which is the mpu no the argo brand the mpuv series yeah technically it's not really mpuv series so the mpuv tractor basically is a tractor version of the a tractor variant for the mpuv and in this case, we have three versions in total right now. We have the cargo variant, we have the personnel, which is the passenger ship, and we have, okay, so tr what's the difference between tractor and cargo, okay? Because technically the tractor is and cargo, it's technically a cargo ship. Now the difference is previously, again, it's, um, it's one of those things where every development cycle, they introduce new mechanics, some ships kind of, kind of get a little bit not say obsolete but it becomes a bit more focused so cargo is mainly for hand cargo smaller cargo boxes and for tractor you can see it's container ship right especially for the whole series this is a good supplement for the whole series that's it now the problem is of course down the line is if you want to have a dedicated cargo ship the tractor is a better pick than the cargo in my opinion yeah, but in general, the MPUV does not have a jump drive, so this ship you can buy it in, in buy it in game, right? If you really want to put some money in it, get in game, right? Take take your dollar and buy something else better. Which actually, I have a few recommendation for day number one. Next up, we have the SRV, and then now you can see one hundred and sixty five dollars. Things are going up, up, up. <laughs> up 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 165 dollars okay again big big psa especially for this year there are a lot a lot of um, complaints not just for star citizen but in general why would you want to spend 165 dollars on a game again this is to help fund the development of star citizen and at the same time, I will also have to admit, Star Citizen has a lot of backers already. I think they raised. I need to double check how much the money is. I know they have more than a, a yeah, they have more than half a billion, five hundred million. I think they have more than that. I think the last number about six, six or six or six fifty, six hundred million. All right, funding. So that's the reason why a lot of people are calling Star Citizen slightly a scam because why would you want to pay so much money, right? Okay, that's the thing that I would admit right now. So that's the reason why I would say just get the discounted starter pack if you want to enjoy Star Citizen. That's it. That's it. Stop. And everything else, if you want, you can buy other games, right? I will admit, buying other games, it's a better choice in my opinion once you get the starter pack. And with that, the SRV is a tugboat, a space tugboat. Right now, it doesn't really have a purpose in the game. So 165 is a little bit, yeah, useless if you bought this ship right now, right now. Some people will buy for like future sake. Yeah, I cannot use the word investment because that is, yeah, I cannot use it. It is a fall uh, fallacy to assume buying ships 
especially internet spaceship, especially JPEG, is an investment. It is, it is a tough, tough choice, right? Slightly maybe, but I would say it as it is, right? Take it as a product, okay? In this case, let's move on to the biggest, I would not say the biggest, the, I would say the poster child for the Invictus launch week for this year. All right, number one is the Ursa Medivac. Finally, I get myself a Wambulance. Now I'm gonna call it a Wambulance. I know there's another name for it, okay? It's called the Nursa. And I think Nursa is it's a better word per se, right? Two syllables, but I still want to use the word Wambulance because it can shoot and it can heal. That is straight away the best, right? The best. And of course, the poster child is the Polaris, the RSI Polaris. And this is the last chance to get it at a cheaper price tag. Again, that's why I'm gonna put a big, big PSA when it comes to some of these big ship, you do not need to buy again, All right? Because I'm gonna show you how much it costs. Let's start off with the Apollo Medivac, All right? This obviously right now, if you look at the Apollo Medivac, the Apollo Triage, this is the tried and true medical ship for Star Citizen at the moment, and you can see the price tag already. Who wants to pay $275 or $250 for an internet spaceship? I do, <laughs> I do, I, I have one. Or rather, what I do is not buy the ship outright, okay? That is not the best case. Don't buy the ship outright. What you want to do is you want to use your ship upgrade as best as you can. In my days, we call it the CCU upgrade or the CCU, yeah, basically the CCU game, not CCU upgrade, the CCU game, cross chassis upgrade. Now it changes its name. The function still performs the same. It is called ship upgrade now. The only difference is there is Warborn ship upgrade. The one that you want is the Warborn ship upgrade because I got my Polaris. <laughs> I do have a Polaris. I got my Polaris not for the sticker price, right? It's much cheaper. So in this case, yeah, if you want to spend so much money, don't spend yet. Wait until almost at the end of the event. I will put out a dedicated video, explain a little bit more about some of the, what do you call this? My strategy or my approach to buy ships in Star Citizen. And I'm sure there's a few videos out there already. If you Google right now, CCU, up, uh, CCU, not say CCU upgrade. Ah, uh, what? Oh, if you type CCU, Star Citizen CCU, there will be a, probably one or two guides that will show you already. I can, I can guarantee that, right? That's how I learned back then. And then of course I refined a little bit and now I think it is better. And of course, I have a few guide as well on some of my older videos, especially the anniversary sale, because that's the best time to do that. And of course, Invictus launch week is also a very good time to do it as well, because you're going to get lots of discount, quote unquote. <laughs> okay, let's, let's not derail too much. Let's move on. The Aurora LN, $40, decent. Now, the con Constellation, or rather the Connie, right? The Constellation Andromeda is, all right? is and was the ship that made me decide larger ship is a better choice for star citizen right back then i was thinking like you know what i should just only get single seated ship small ships but after playing with constellation andromeda yeah my whole perspective changed and in this case 240 dollars not bad okay not bad if you really want to spend the amount of money Constellation Andromeda is a solid pick. One of the main reason is it's technically a three, uh, it's, it's a multi-crew ship, but I would say it's a, it's on paper, I think they say it's four, four crew members, but I can say it's, it's a two crew member because it has pilot control weapons. And for the Andromeda series, oh no, sorry, Andro, for the Andromeda hull, you get a Merlin which is a snap fighter, which is a parasite ship. So you just need two. If you have friends to play with, the Andromeda, it's a good pick. Next up, we have the Constellation Aquila. Now this is an exploration variant, $315. Mm. It has better radar, that's one. But is it better, better? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. We, we have to wait. 
Next up, we have the Constellation Phoenix, $350. Now, I do not know what does the luxury will do in the game at the moment. CIG did say it will play a role, right? Luxury passenger or something. So in this case, the Constellation Phoenix is the luxury version, $350. Personally, it's an easy skip because there are better ships out there for luxury, in my opinion. The only difference is they are way more expensive. That's how it is. Next up, we have the Constellation Taurus. Now, this guy is the best, in my opinion. Best, best ship if you want to do everything in Star Citizen alone. Because it can carry cargo. If you want to do cargo, no problem. It can carry an Ursa, no problem. It has pilot control weapons. No problem. And it's soloable. In my opinion, it's soloable. Is it the best ship to solo? Obviously not. Let's put it out there. It is the best jack of all trade and with $200, cheaper by $40 compared to the Andromeda with larger cargo space. Yeah, I dare say this is the best for the price. All right. Is it the best multi cruise ship? Yeah, no. Not the best multi cruise ship. This is technically second place in my multi cruise ship list that is affordable. Next up, we have the Lynx at $60. This is a luxury vehicle. We have the Mantis. Now, this one we have gone a little bit more combat ish. This is an intradictor ship. Now, this one is a niche ship, in my opinion. At $150, this ship's main function is to lock down other ships' quantum jump. Right, basically space bubble. If you played EVE Online, you probably will know that. Right? And for those who do not know, basically you prevent other ships to go into quantum jump. Basically, they cannot hyper jump away or warp. <laughs> okay, depending which, which school of thought you want to. For Star Citizen, it's called quantum jump. Next up, we have a big, big ship. And it's one of the ships that I am contemplating to add into my fleet. It is the Perseus. It is $675. Yep. <laughs> crazy, crazy expensive. Now, the nice part about Perseus at the moment, it has the biggest, biggest non capital size gun. Two twin size seven turret. It is huge. It is huge. Two twin size. That means it's four. And if all aims in the same direction, you can, I think you can easily shred a Corvette. And what is a Corvette? A Perseus. Perseus probably is a light Corvette. And the Polaris. The Polaris is a Corvette. At $750, the Polaris is awesome. The more I read about it, the more I get a bit more information on some of the game loops, the Polaris is getting more and more attractive to me. And in this case, we have a special upgrade offer. And we're gonna check. Uh, we're gonna take a look later, right? Special upgrade offer because we don't really need it at the moment. And then, especially for expensive ship, yeah, this this one we can reserve it for last, in my opinion. The special upgrade offer at seven hundred and fifty dollars. It is an expensive ship. I will not recommend you pay the sticker price. That's how it is. But at the same time, the ship will go up in price. So we're gonna end it with a. Easy, easy recommendation later if you really, really want to pick up the Polaris. Next up, we have the Scorpius, $240. Oof. The X-Wing variant in Star Citizen. All right. Next up, we have the Scorpius Antares, which is the uh, basically a less pew-pew but more utility. So remember Mantis? So this guy has EMP and Intradiction. So it can shut down ships via EMP non uh, non destructive how do you call it non destructive uh, I, you know what i'll just put it yes an emp people know it emp and interdiction basically two of the best thing to capture ships and we have ursa 50 dollars and next up or not say next last i was about to say last right ursa medivac at 60 dollars the wambulance this is the new kit in the block. And of course, when there's new ships, there is lifetime insurance. But I'm going to save that for last because usually new ships, new vehicle will last at least one month before they take it away from the stores. That means you have plenty of time to decide if you really, really want it or not. 
And last but not least, we have the Zeus Mark II Marquee. The MR is Marquee, apparently that's what they call it. I call it just MR or Mark. See, the thing is, is it Marquee or Mark? Because the spelling is interesting, right? Anyway, the, re the reason why I say MR, so that I will not mispronounce it. Now, the Zeus Mark II MR is actually a not bad chip as well. It has Intradiction and I think it has EMP as well. So yeah, interesting. And with that being said, we have reached the end of day number one. War Bond Daily Deals, 10-year insurance. Of course, if you've seen the video, it's awesome. Special offer. We've got lots of merch. Now, again, big, big PSA. You've seen the big boy or the boys, right? No, big boy. The big boy, the Polaris, $750. It is crazy, all right? I will admit, $750 for a video game is way too much. With that being said, $750 to fund for the development of Star Citizen. I think it's okay. But then again, it's it should not. I mean, yeah, no, I think it's okay. If you believe in the game, it's okay. If you know what you're doing, it's okay. And that's the reason why I'm doing this type of videos is to make an informed video or make sure you are informed when you want to buy internet spaceship okay i don't want you guys to have the biggest regrets like oh no i spent 750 dollars on a polaris and it is an internet spaceship <laughs> personally also i would say 750 dollars is a little bit too much for an internet spaceship but for the Polaris, again, I'll have a, a different segment for it. We're going to talk a bit about Polaris and why I think it's the best ship for me for now. No, I don't think it's for now. The Polaris has been the best ship. There are other ships that's going to compete with Polaris. Yes. But the Polaris kind of... Okay, you know what? There's only one ship that that takes the edge off com compared to the Polaris, right? There's only one ship right now, one. Uh, but that also, it's a bit different. And with that being said, last but not least, you only need to buy a starter pack, big, big PSA in order to enjoy Star Citizen. Everything is uh, purchasable in-game. And also Invictus Launch Week is a free fly event, which means you can fly all the ship listed for free. And if you want to wait, that's all fine by me. And for those who wants to join Star Citizen after that, don't forget to use a referral code, preferably mine. If you don't use mine, that's totally fine. Make sure you use a referral code to enjoy Star Citizen because you get extra 5,000 UEC. It might not be a lot, but free is free. And with that being said, a quick, quick little look at the Ursa Medivac, also known as the Nursa, but I'm gonna call it the Wambulance. <laughs> okay, quick one. Now, the reason why I'm putting this last is very simple. It's the tier three medical bed. And it changes a little bit, just a little bit. So I'm gonna bring up this patch note. Come on, load. I thought you loaded already. <laughs> Oh, wow, I was really ready for it, but it doesn't want to. So medical bed respawn update, all right? So because of the new medical gameplay, they changed, actually they changed twice already. Previously, they say all medical bed can be respawn, well, unofficially. And then after that, officially they put tier three medical beds cannot be used as a respawn and now they change back to tier three medical beds can be used as a respawn point now i'm gonna say this take it as a grain of salt because things will change they might remove it because if they remove it if you know this is just temporary yeah you taper your expectation in this case of course they did say uh Tier 3 is for 20km away and uh, no, up to 20km. T2 medical beds, uh, previously up to 20. Now it's 50 kilometers. And then of tier 1 is, I think, everywhere. But I don't know yet. 
I don't know what's the full detail. This is just a temporary, in my opinion, it's just a temporary fix, right? Until we get a full medical lockdown game mechanic, then probably I'll do a, a more in-depth report. But the reason why I'm putting this out is now all medical bits allowed respawn. Uh -huh. That means the nurse R is actually a very, very top pick for the vehicle perspective. And there are a few nice combination out there that you can utilize with the Ursa Medivac. Yeah, we'll talk about this more later. This is just one thing I want to put it on day one video. And last but not least, right? The Nursa, right? Only for the Warborn edition has lifetime insurance. And on top, uh, and on top of that, they include the Invictus flight jacket steel. Okay, we don't care about that. Lifetime insurance. I will explain more on this on future videos. If not, this video is going to get way too long. With that being said, I will say don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button and help this channel grow. Don't forget to play Star Season if you are on the fence. Right now is the best time to do so. And last but not least, fly safe and I will see you in the verse and in fact i will see you in the next star citizen video and what is next okay let, let's go what is next event schedule the next one will be crusader industry tumbrel land system this is actually a very nice yeah. mirai okay i think we covered mirai a little bit the new kit on the block the nmisc and that is may 19th to may 20th yeah definitely not tomorrow until then See ya, my friends. Yep. Yep, 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 yep.